Hi, welcome to this tutorial. We're going to show you how to use Emacs and R on the NAU High Performance Computing Cluster. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start an XWIN server. So in Windows, we do SIGWIN uh, X, XWIN server. Actually, I already have one of those running here. It's called uh, SIGWIN X server on uh, display 0.0. .0. So to um, launch something there, I'm going to open up a SIGWIN64 terminal type display equals colon 0.0, .0 and then open up my favorite X terminal, which is going to be LX terminal, um, which is nicely configurable. So sometimes that gives me an error, so I'm just going to do it again. Most of the time that works. So I'm not going to use that little terminal anymore. We're going to use this one. And so when we're here, we do ssh-y monsoon.hpc.nau.edu. And that's going to um, prompt us for our login password. So here I'm going to put in my NAU password. And now uh, I have access to um, Monsoon. The, so I'm in the login node right now. And now, uh, now that I've put in my password, I'm going to turn on my show off so you guys can see what key presses that I, I'm using. And so, yeah, I just, it's so. Um, I think by default, you know, there is an Emacs installed on a login in Node. So if you just do Emacs, uh, it'll pop up a graphical Emacs window for you if you got X Windows for uh, X forwarding set up appropriately. You can type Control X, Control C to quit out of that. Otherwise, if you don't have X forwarding set up, you can use Emacs NW, and then you can use Emacs. Uh, in the terminal, the same way that you're used to using um, all the same key sequences, all the same everything, um, but in the terminal. So it, also, you know, if you're on a slow inter internet connection, it's probably a lot better to use the terminal than it is to use the X window system because it'll be a lot faster. Let's do the send back and forth. Anyway, so you see that here, the default version of uh, Emacs that we have is uh, 23.1. Um, and that's okay, but if you want to use a more recent version of Emacs, you can um, use uh, module load Emacs. You might want to put that in your bash RC file. And when you do that, um, so it says unable to locate a module file for Emacs. Well, that's funny. <laughs> I wonder why. Well, uh, I thought there was a module uh, file for Emacs. Module avail. Mm. So um, I wonder if there's some configuration that I have to, to use to to get access to that module file. So I think. Um, so I'm going to look at my old bash RC, which I deleted for, for this tutorial. Um, so, so here I only have two module uh, things. OK, so yeah, so I guess usually in your bash RC, there is some global definitions and some cluster definitions. So I guess uh, these things usually should be in your bash RC. So uh, let's do that. So here I'm going to just give a demo of how to use Emacs in the um, terminal. So here I'm going to use emacs.nw uh, bash RC tdh to open up my old bash RC file. And after that, I'm going to copy these kind of uh, standard uh, global definition from the bash RC into my bash RC file. So this is actually, you know, uh, what you should probably have when you're logging into the cluster for the first time. Something that looks like this, right? So you're going to get a, some kind of login message like this, and you're going to have some, um, some prompt like this that looks like TA, uh, you know, your username at wind and the directory that you're in. So doing that, we should be able to do module load Emacs to get access to a more recent Emacs version, right? So here now the Emacs that we're using is going to be 26.3, which is the most recent version of Emacs that I just recently asked the cluster guys to install.
And so, um, and so, yeah. So, one way to inst uh, to use R on the cluster is uh, inside of Emacs. So here I'm going to give a demo inside of the terminal again. So here I'm opening up an R file in uh, Emacs in the terminal, and you see that here it's fundamental mode. So it's not recognizing that the R files are um, are uh, available or, or, or should be treated specially. So that means that Emacs statistics is not installed. So here I'm going to type Control X, Control C to get out of there. And now I'm going to show you how to install Emacs statistics uh, from scratch from the most recent version. So uh, first things first, you can go to the Emacs Speak Statistics website, ess.rproject.org. And you can go to um, uh, download. And you can go to um, most recent version, um, which is, I guess, here. Let's take this targz file. So here I'm going to copy that link location, and then I'm going to use wgip to download that. Here I'm going to paste that URL. Here it's saving now to ESS 18.10.2. I'm going to use tar xf to, uh, to open up that ESS in my home directory. And meanwhile, we're waiting that to that for that to unpack. I'm going to open up my dot file. So that's github.com slash td slash dot files. And inside of there, we've got um, some Emacs configurations that you can copy that you can use to set up if you're doing this kind of manual ESS installation. So um, in Emacs, you know, you have these um, these things called auto loads and auto mode A lists, and so what these things are doing is, um, you know, it's telling Emacs whenever I open a file that ends with .r, um, you know, we should use R mode, and whenever we invoke R mode, we should look at for a, a file called ESS site .el. So the only other thing that you have to do to, to, to tell Emacs um, how to use ESS is um, you have to edit the load path variable. So the load path is where it's going to be looking for all of um, the different um, um, the packages that it's going to install. So here when we look at um, the ESS directory that we just opened, here let's open it up in Emacs. Here, Emacs ESS. That's going to open up the ESS directory in Emacs. Well, there is no ESS directory. So it's ESS 18.10.2. So here, uh, ESS directory, we have a bunch of different stuff. And so inside of the list directory, we have this file called ESS site, which is mentioned uh, here, right? This is kind of the, the main ESS file. So if we want R to recognize um, uh, the R files, what we have to do is, um, well, maybe the, the, you know, so the easiest thing is probably if we could just do, put our load ESS site.el in our, um, in our .emax file. And what that means is uh, it's going to try to load that every time Emacs starts up. So here I'm going to just do it right now. Control X, Control E, and so it says cannot open load file, no such file, right? So what does that mean? It means it can't find the ESS site directory because we haven't told it where that ESS site direct uh, .el file lives. So the way that it finds that stuff is with the load path variable, right? So if we copy, you know, one of these load path lines here like this, you know, so the load path, if we do a control H V, it's going to describe what the current load path is. And so you can see that these are, this is all the, um, 
you know, current load paths, you know, all the places where Emacs is, is currently searching for uh, files to load. And, uh, you know, I guess ESS is not in here, right? So I just tried to search for ESS and it's not there. But now if we add that directory, so so if we add ES, uh, the ESS directory and then the list, so the ESS list directory that we just created by downloading that stuff, then we will get access to that. So let's try that. Here, I'm gonna do control X, control E. That's gonna add that directory to the path. So here it's echoing the current path. We don't see where that ESS is because it's probably at the end there. But now when we do load ESS site.el, it's doing this load ESS site.el, and here it responds back true. So now we have access to all the functions that ESS provides. So here uh, I'm going to open up a foo.r file in my home directory. And now you see that it is rec recognized as an R file. It is... Um, uh, in ESS mode now, and so if we type some code here, you know we are going to get um, all of the the functions that we've been talking about in previous tutorials. So Control C, Control N uh, will allow you to start up or to execute one line of code. Here it's asking me what directory to do it in. Here I just sent a code, uh, a line of code to the uh, R command line in my Emacs window. You know, you can do all these standard interactions that you would be able to do on your own desktop computer. But now this code is running on the login node of the HPC cluster. So a couple more things to mention. So here I'm going to use Control X, Control C to get out of this. Um, and then after that, you know, if we open up Emacs again, we're going to, you know, because we added that stuff in our .emacs file, we have access, it's going to load that um, that ESS every time we start up. So here, if we do foo.r, you know, that's going to be recognized as an ESS um, uh, buffer. And so the only other thing that I wanted to mention, right, like I was saying earlier, if we go into our .emacs and, you know, sometimes it takes a while. I mean, there it wasn't super slow, so maybe it's not super necessary to do this, but on some systems, you might want to, instead of doing this load, um, you can use this, this other code. So for example, here, if we add these lines, right, this is, it says, so it's going to add to list. Um, so, so these two lines mean, well, you know, whenever we are opening a file that ends with R, we're going to use R mode. And then whenever we, so these auto loads, what it says is whenever we're going to ask for R mode, um, uh, yeah, actually, so R mode, we have to, we have to have R mode here. And um, whenever we ask for a command named R mode, it's going to, uh, load it from ESS site.el if it's not already loaded. So this is kind of like a little convenience thing. So you don't have to, if the loading takes a long time and you're not always going to be loading um, ESS site in all of your Emacs sessions, you might not want to do that load every time it starts up, right? So in that case, well, you can use these two lines and that means that it will just load the ESS site conditionally when you invoke the R mode command. And here it's invoking the R mode command every time we open the .r file. So let's see if that works. Um, so here I'm going to try Emacs uh, again. And so here it starts up. And here I'm going to find a file called uh, foo.r. And so now you see it's taking a little bit longer because that's actually that's uh, that's loading the the ESS right uh, when I when I was asking to open the R file. And so here if we close it, try to open it again, you notice that it's going to start a lot faster because here it, it was already loaded. So yeah, it's just a, here, I mean, in modern systems now, it's not a big difference, but that's something that you might want to do for optimization purposes. Um, if you're not using uh, R um, at Emacs in all, I'm uh, sorry, if you're not using R in all of your Emacs sessions. The other thing I wanted to mention before I finish this, this tutorial is um, uh, you, you shouldn't really run computationally expensive jobs, uh, you know, including R, 
on the login nodes. So instead, uh, what you should do is you should run an interactive job. And so to do that on the cluster, you know, they, I usually put uh, something in my um, um, in my bin interactive job.sh script. So here I have some code that says uh, whenever I ask for an interactive dash job.sh, it means run s run dash t24. So it means run s run with 24 hour time limit, four gigabytes of memory, one CPU, and running the command uh, bash. So if I do that, um, you know, see here I have this file saved in my bin directory, and my bin directory is on the path. So right, the home th798 bin. That's uh, that's my bin directory, right? So if we do ls dash l bin uh, interactive job, right? You see that this is um, this is actually executable. You know, if you create one a script like this, you can make it executable using s ch mod uh, u plus x if you want it to just be executable for yourself, or um, a plus x if you want it to be executable for everybody. Here, uh, you see now there's two new x's here. That means there it's executable for everybody, whereas previously there were no x's there. So that means it was just readable by everybody. Um, so anyway, so now that it's executable and it's on my path, I can just use that script on my command line, interactive job.sh. And what that's going to do is it's going to ask the cluster system to um, start a uh, compute job uh, with the requested uh, computational resources. Usually when I do this, it, ha it starts almost immediately. And uh, so maybe the cluster is a little bit busy uh, right now. But um, the idea is that, yeah, so here you go. So the idea is that you should be able to just request a quick interactive job like this and then open up Emacs, right? So here I open up Emacs on the, um, on the compute node. And so now we have Emacs, which is running on compute node 56. And we can, do, we can open up R. And you know, in our, in our .r files, we can do all kinds of compute-intensive jobs, and that should be totally fine. You know, you're not supposed to run compute-intensive jobs on the login node, but it's totally fine to do that on the compute nodes. So in practice, you should always do that first: start um, an interactive job, and then launch your Emacs and your R on the compute node. Okay, so. Thanks for listening, and I hope you learned a little bit about Emacs on Cluster.